Hey, I'm Dave Mira. Welcome to my hometown, Greenville, North Carolina. I've been riding a bike pretty much all of my life. I've been pro for 10 years. It's a lot of fun, but it takes a lot of practice. First, we're going to go out in the parking lot and show you some flatland basics. Next, we're going to go into the skate park. We're going to work on the pyramid, the mini ramp, the grind rail, and lastly, the box jump. <laughs> Remember, wear your safety gear and have a lot of fun. Welcome to Trick Tips Volume 1. Oh yeah, we need a bike. Let's go get a bike. Hey guys, we're here at the Bicycle Post to pick out our first bike, which can be really confusing for you kids and the parents out there. Some of the things you want to look at probably is price point. You get what you pay for. Obviously, the more you spend, the better the bike you're going to get. $300 is a great entry-level bike that's beautiful for every kid that wants to get on it and try and find out whether he really likes freestyle or not. This particular bike right here is a mid-level bike. This bike has chrome rims, which is the ultimate surface for braking. And this is a three-piece crank, which is a lot more durable than a one-piece. As you get better, you're probably going to want to upgrade into parts like these. There's trails bikes that are pegless, and that's racing and all those kind of bikes. This is a freestyle bike, and the reason why is the pegs for flatland and grinding tricks. This is a front brake for endos and other tricks like that, and a gyro, which enables you to spin the bars around without the brake cables getting tangled. That's an, that's an essential for freestyle. But one thing you want to do first off is size it up. Make sure that, you know, you can stand over the top tube. Usually six and under is probably a 16-inch bike. I, I would advise that. If you can stand comfortably over the top tube, 20 inches is what I ride. I recommend the seat goes level with your knee for overall bike control and tricks such as bar spins. It's just really essential to lock your knees against the seat, spin the bars, and just gives you all the control you need. And that's what I do. With the handlebars, when sitting on the bike, I recommend the handlebars are parallel with the fork for a kid starting out. It's not too far forward or not too far back. I think that's pretty important for a happy medium there. Because handlebars that are too far forward are really hard to control. And obviously too far back, they're going to be in your lap. You're going to try to jump. You're going to lean forward. It's not going to happen. Once you size it up, just kind of get comfortable with the bike. This has handbrakes, no pedal brake. So just kind of ride it around, get to know your bike, and then you're ready to ride. First, we're going to go out in the parking lot and show you some of the basics of Flatland, the building blocks of freestyle. First and most importantly is the bunny hop, which is a gateway trick to all tricks, like grinds, airs, 360s, you name it. Then we're going to take you to the 180 bunny hop, the 360 bunny hop, the bar spin on flat ground, and the manual, which is another very important trick. I'm joined here with Kip Williamson to help us through it. That's right, Dave. We're going to show you exactly how to do some of the more basic flatland tricks that are going to help out your overall riding, regardless of what type of riding you decide to do. We're going to show you the proper technique. It's definitely no substitute for the amount of practice that you're going to want to put in. Exactly. I started out riding flatland, and it's helped me out a lot. The first thing we're going to bring you through is the bunny hop. The bunny hop is basically getting air without a ramp. A lot of tricks, especially the bunny hop, are going to feel somewhat uncomfortable, maybe even unnatural at times. But with a lot of practice, you can become an expert at this trick. Exactly. The more you do something, the better you get at it, the easier it feels. So let's go. Do 
just remember guys, roll along at a slow pace, keep your arms and legs bent, and your pedals level. That's very important is keeping pedals level. As you're pulling up your front wheel, pop your back end up, push the bars forward, level out, and that's a bunny hop. Roll forward at a slow pace, arms and legs bent, pedals level, compress, lean back, pull forward. And just remember to any trick really on a bike, keep your pedal level. That makes things a lot easier. But ride along at a slow speed. Pull up on your front wheel as it gets higher. Pop your back end up, push your bars forward, and level out and land down. That's basically how a bunny hop works. <laughs> Good. Once you're doing bunny hops, I'd say around six inches high, you're probably ready to step up to the 180 bunny hop. You almost kind of want to thrust your hips, kind of pre-torque, spin off the ground as you're hopping. So it's really all about timing. The 180 bunny hop is a little bit more difficult than the regular bunny hop for obvious reasons. You're going to land backwards and we'll tell you how to do a rollback a little bit later in the tape. Right now we're just going to focus on the actual 180 part of the trick. And what you're going to do is you're going to preload your body by turning quickly to the left in almost like a swerving motion and picking up the back end of the bike and then cranking it to the right so it's kind of one of one swift motion almost like a snake you're kind of slithering almost a little bit of a tip for you is that myself I pick up with my right foot which is back our pedals are level my right foot's back so I'm gonna actually turn to my right so I'm gonna throw the back end of the bike around behind me and that's actually gonna play a huge factor a little bit later on when we talk about mini ramp as well it helps you to turn if you do this properly when you land backwards, it should actually send you in what we call a rollback, rolling down backwards or fakey, we call it. Once you're mastered the 180 bunny hop, you're going to want to take it to the 360 bunny hop, which will help you in a lot of different moves when you're into the skate park. 360s over a box jump, 360s over a pyramid, which basically are a 360 bunny hop. What I usually do when I 360 bunny hop is I'll pre torque pop off the ground, create my spin by kind of spinning, kind of pre-torquing to where you turn your front tire enough, you pop off the ground, spin, I come around 270, pop my back end down, pivot the rest at a 90 degree angle, and roll away. That's how to do a 360 bunny hop. Well, the next trick we're going to show you is the bar spin. We'll start on the flat ground and then bring you into the skate park. Bar spin is one of those tricks, if you put a little bit of time in, maybe in an hour or so, you're going to be able to pull this trick off. What we're going to start off by doing is we're going to roll forward on our pedals with both feet, just like we did with the bunny hop, somewhat at a slow to medium pace. What we're going to do is we're going to lean back, we're going to pinch the seat with our knees, and we're going to spin the handlebars. I spin it with my left hand and catch with my right. You might spin with your right hand, catch with your left. Either way, you're going to spin it with one hand, catch it with the palm of your hand, just like that, and ride away with both hands on the handle grips. And remember, keep your pedals level at all times. Okay, roll up at a slow speed, pedals level. Lean back, pinch the seat, spin the bars, hand to hand. We roll through to a slow to medium pace. We're going to pinch the seat with our knees, spin the bars, catch with both hands, and ride away. Okay, guys, well, another way, now that you learned how to pinch the seat and do the bar spin on the flat ground, this is another way to take it to the ramps and get used to it before you're actually doing it on the ramp. Just kind of lean up. This is kind of Ryan Nyquist's technique. He's, he told me about how he learned them. It was basically put his wheel against the fence and just throw them, spin them, and just get used to it, whether you're throwing them whatever way you want, doubles. Just get used to it. But when you're riding a ramp, you're not necessarily looking at your handle grips. You're kind of looking through the bike, keeping the ramp in perspective and your handle grips. So you're really not focusing on anything. And that's the same with no footers, no handers, etc. What you want to do is just close your eyes and do it, look away, whatever you want, but just get used to it and know exactly because a lot of it is by feel. It's hand-eye coordination. It's not that you're staring at it. It gets complicated, but you will learn that, and that just takes a little bit of imagination, focus, pads, having fun, and ripping. Roll, pedals level, lean back, pinch the seat, spin the bars hand-to-hand -hand and catch it right away. Woo! Here we go. We're going to take it to your next trick. Before we go to the skate park, I promise it's the last one, and it's the manual. 
also known as a coasting wheelie. The manual is one of those tricks, Dave, where you got to spend a lot of time on it, just like all these other flatland tricks. Let's talk about how we're going to do the manual. And definitely the most technical thing about the manual is that you're feathering of the brake. If you're going to flip backwards, you want to tap your brake. If you're going to fall forward, you're just going to want to lean back and keep your hand off the brake. It gets technical, it takes a lot of practice, but when you get good at it, it's a lot of fun on the ramps, I guarantee you that. Well, one of the ways that we're going to show you how to do the manual is basically some of the other elements that we use in the other tricks, and that's as far as rolling forward at a slow to medium pace. We're going to kind of be laid back away from the seat, kind of pinching the seat or around that area with our knees, and we're going to make sure that we stay flexible, make sure that we bend our knees when we pick up the front wheel of the bike. Stay loose, remember, keep your pedals level. You can't do it with your pedals down, it's always got to be level. Lean over the back tire, pull your front wheel up, and remember, feather the brake. Yeah, basically feathering the brakes is not locking the brake up totally. You just want to barely tap the brake, and that comes through time and riding and experience. So it's something that you want to get into right away with some of these building block tricks like the manual. Remember, practice makes perfect. So let's go. Let's do the manual. Now remember, with the manual, as you're leaning back over the back tire, to pull up the front wheel, just feather your brake. That's going to be it. When your front wheel goes down, you just want to lean back and stay off the brake. When you start flipping over backwards, you want to hit the brake real lightly, feather it, keep the front wheel up, go as long as you can. When you can do five parking spots, you're getting good at the mound. You're probably ready to move on to something else like hopping up curbs, mandolin, jumping off the end of the next curb. Great parking lot trick. Pedals level, lean over the back tire, pull up the front wheel, and feather the brake. Basically what I used to do as a kid, I'd go out to a parking lot and try to go as many parking spaces as I could possibly go, and the farther you go, the better you're at it. When you get to the ramps, it's that much easier. So good luck, and uh, let's go to the park. Okay guys, now we're in the skate park. Before we get started with the basics of jumping the pyramid, I'd like you to meet my friend Austin. What's going on, Austin? What's up? Cool. One of the most important parts when you're in the skate park is safety gear. And you can notice that Austin's wearing shin guards to protect his shins, knee pads, elbow pads, gloves, and most importantly, a full face helmet. And I recommend full face helmets for all beginners. So once you're geared up, let's get started. Okay, the thing about the pyramid, which makes it a lot more forgiving and a lot more fun to jump and easier to start with, is that it's a wedge-to-wedge -wedge ramp. Basically what it is, is you can roll up, jump on top, and roll down. The best way to start out is come up the edge and just kind of jump the small corner of it. It's probably the best way to start it, only for the fact that it takes less speed and it's less of a bunny hop. Yeah, Austin. Speed is really important here, and basically the, the faster you go, the harder you bunny hop, the higher you go on a wedge-to-wedge -wedge jump like the pyramid. You can start out going really slow, just get enough speed to make it up to the top, and roll over and ride down. For your first time, just get up top, roll over it, and roll down. Let's take you through the basic jump. Go about two or three good cranks, keep your pedals level, legs and arms bent, ride up it, roll over, jump it a little bit, and roll down. We've rolled it a few times, we've gone halfway. Now we're gonna clear it and show you how easy that is. Wanna clear it? Okay. Go a little faster, jump a little further until you're clearing. And this is where the bunny hop really comes into play. Speed is really important here, and basically the, the faster you go, the harder you bunny hop, the higher you go on a wedge-to-wedge -wedge jump like the pyramid. It's time to move on to something else, and bar spins is a perfect one to move on to next. We learned bar spins on the flat ground. Well, this is basically the same thing, only you're coming up a wedge, bar spin, roll down. Very simple, and once you get better at that, that's when you start jumping the whole thing. You're going to roll up, pedals level, pinch your seat, bar spin, 
Come across it. When you're approaching the pyramid, you're going to ride up and make sure your pedals are level. You can pinch your seat before you even get on the pyramid for the bar spin. Ride up, pinch your seat, pull up the front end like you would on flat ground, spin the bars, throw it with your right or whatever hand you prefer, and catch it with your opposite hand right in the palm, roll across, and come down. Just like in the parking lot, only you're doing it on a ramp now. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> This is where now the bunny hop and the bar spin are added together for one trick. It's a bunny hop bar spin from wedge to wedge. Let me show you. Come up. Bunny hop pinch spin. You roll up the ramp, pedals level. He's bent, crouch down, compress, bunny hop, push the bars forward, pinch your seat, throw your bars, whichever way you throw them, catch them, and ride down. See, now that was adding two tricks together that you learned out in the parking lot, the bunny hop and the bar spin into one trick, and that's considered a bunny hop bar spin over the pyramid. Good luck, wear your safety gear and have fun. Okay guys, the next obstacle is the grind box. This is a more technical side of riding, but it's a lot of fun. Basically, this is where you apply the bunny hop. So what you did out in the parking lot, now we're in the skate park, and this is where the bunny hop is very useful. Bunny hopping up, grinding down this off the edge. And we have special guest here, Colin Winkleman, to help us through it. What's up, Colin? Hi, Dave. How you doing? Pretty good. Well, you want to want to take us through the grind and tell us which one you learned first, and what do you think's easier, and what it's all about? Yeah. Um, after you've uh, you've mastered your bunny hops, then uh, first grind I learned was a feeble grind. And I learned a double peg, which was easier to me. But then again, that's what's great about freestyle. Everybody's different. He may learn something, I learn something else. Nobody, all, not everybody does the same tricks and that's very important. So where do, you, where do you start? So, well, you want to find yourself, like this park has this, this is the lowest ledge here, you know, probably the easiest one to start on. Something that's easily within your bunny hopping range once you can go up a curb. And, uh, you know, the first thing to learn is just uh, to stall in, the, in your grind position. Okay, so you're ready to do some grinds, but before you can grind, you gotta learn how to stall in the grinding position. So, uh, to do a feeble grind, you wanna learn a feeble stall. That's with your front tire up on the ledge and your back peg on the coping. You're gonna approach the ledge at an angle, bunny hop high enough to bunny hop onto the ledge, but leave your back tire hanging down on the side to where your peg is gonna catch, like this. Hop on, hop off and roll away. Once you're confident with your stalls, you can go ahead and add a little bit of speed and do some grinds. I like the feeble grind because uh, it gives you a little more control over, uh, it's just like riding on a normal, you know, riding down the street. You can steer, you know, you can get your, your tire about this far over before your back peg's gonna fall off. So you can steer to keep your balance once you start grinding. Okay guys, I'm going to take you through the double peg stall and then we're going to learn the grind. As we told you before, it's a little bit different than a feeble. It's where you land both pegs, come at it at an angle, bunny hop, leave your front, stall, hop off, and that's your double peg stall. As you get better at that, you want to go a little bit faster towards the ledge. Bunny hop, lead with your front peg, grind, and hop off. Same thing. Oh, man. Come up at an angle towards the ledge. Bunny hop, lead with your front peg, grind, and hop off. Right up at an angle, remember the bunny hop. Grind, hop off. 
double pegs have a tendency of sliding a little bit slower because there's two pegs grinding. So you tend to have to have a little bit more speed going into it. One thing about a double peg grind, which kind of helps you in balance, if you're ever leaning over the deck, you can lean on your pedal so you don't fall on the inside edge and then just pop back off and hop in and ride away. You shouldn't need your pedal, but if you do, it does help to keep you from falling inside. <laughs> Once you mastered the bunny hop to grind on the smaller ledge, now it's time to take it to a next one. Colin, do you have any tips? A lot of parks have uh, transition to grinds like you have here, a small transition to a, a lower ledge and a bigger transition to a bigger ledge. Once you're comfortable with your bunny hop to grinds, you can go ahead and take it to the transitions and that's going to put you right on the rail without as much effort in your bunny hop. I agree. I think this is all bunny hop where this is a combination of bunny hop and tranny. So actually, it's a little bit more dangerous, but it's less work involved in trying to yank your bike up. So you kind of got a little both working with you both ways. So good luck and have fun. Well guys, I hope you had fun with all the grinds we showed you. As you saw, there's a lot of different styles. Um, thank you, Connor, for coming out and helping us through it. I know I had fun, and uh, hopefully you guys can learn some things from this video, and good luck. Definitely, wear all your safety gear, and the most important thing is just have fun. Okay guys, we're over on the mini ramp to talk you through the basics of carving, pumping, flying out, dropping in, and last, the peg grind. Kip Williamson's back to help me out and take me through it. Yeah, Dave, one of the things about the mini ramp is that if you don't take it somewhat seriously, it can uh, be somewhat of a dangerous ramp. So we're going to teach the kids the proper lines, the direction they're going to want to go. Of course, for each rider out there, it's going to be a little bit different, and uh, we're going to hopefully help you out there as far as being comfortable on your bike on the mini ramp. Oh, sorry. Not there yet. you got to make sure and this is probably one of the most important things, is find out which pedal placement you have and which way you turn. I recommend, if you're comfortable riding with your right foot forward, as I do, you're going to want to turn to your left, being your dominant turning direction. Kip, you, pr you ride with your left foot forward? That's correct. And which way do you turn? I turn to the right. But I don't recommend left foot forward turning to your left. That's considered goofy footed, and on a bike, it's more unnatural. It's really awkward to keep your left foot forward and turn to your left. Once you're comfortable on your bike, let's show you the pumping. Yeah, let's show them the proper way to pump and carve, and those are two of the most important keys on the mini ramp. Definitely. Let's talk about the transition, because a transition is a weird thing. It's great, it creates a lot of speed, but it's technical. On a mini ramp right here, your pumping zone is right here in this last quarter. Push, compress, pull, push. See where I'm kind of extending right at the bottom. Pulling up, extending. One thing that really helped me a lot when I was learning how to pump a ramp was breathing. I would kind of breathe in on the way up and breathe out on the way down to create rhythm for me. There's a couple things you don't want to do. One of those things that you don't want to do is you don't want to be pedaling when you're going up the transition. You want to try and get all your speed on the flat bottom of the ramp. Eventually, when you get good enough, you're not going to have to actually pedal at all. You're just going to be able to use your body weight and your momentum to get you closer and closer to the top, and pretty soon you'll be airing over the top of the coping. Keep in mind when you're starting out, you're not going to be going up to the top right away. It might take you a couple weeks to get comfortable on your bike. We're expecting that to happen. So start low on the ramp and work your way up. Make sure you keep your body weight leaned into the transition. If you're not leaned in, you'll start going up, sliding out, and falling down. And you don't want to do that because it's going to make it a lot tougher and it'll hurt. 
I promise you that. When you're carving, when you're about to coping, what you want to do is just pump, pedal as hard as you can, and throw your weight over the deck, and that'll be your first fly out. Okay, when you get about to the top here, give it a crank and fly out. Push your weight over the deck. And when you do fly out, you want to take off one foot, push your weight over the deck to make it onto the deck so you're not falling back into the ramp. But if you do fall, one thing you want to keep in mind, you have knee pads and elbow pads on, try to land on your pads. Okay, the peg stall drop in for the first couple times. You're better off just keeping your foot off. Stay loose. And just push off with your foot and, and keep it on the deck. Lean in and just go right down. Remember, just lean your butt over the ramp, over the transition. You want to keep your weight into the transition. If you don't, you're going to slide out and fall down. So you want to take all your weight and lean it over. But remember, you got to turn your wheel to roll right in like you're rolling down a hill. One footed, push in, keep your foot off. Okay, we have Austin to join us on the mini ramp, and we're going to teach him the peg stall drop in. You ready, Austin? Yep. Let's do it. Okay, Austin. Set it on up. Now what Austin's going to do, if you watch him set up, he sets his bike up, his pedals. Now you want to you want to switch your pedals, right, Austin? Okay. As you can see now, this is what you want to look like when you're setting up for the peg stall drop in. Pegs, dropouts are off the coping. Pegs are on the coping, so nothing catches when you're trying to when you're trying to drop in and throw you off balance. Now watch with Austin, how he's gonna take his weight. Remember Austin, lean your weight in and lead with your front wheel, turn and roll right in. Remember, take your butt and put your butt over the transition, lead with your front wheel, steer right in. Yeah! Now you can see where Austin kind of slid a little bit sideways, it's because his weight wasn't leaned in enough. Now watch Austin's body when he's about to drop in. He's gonna take his weight and he's going to shift it over the transition. He's going to turn his wheel as he leans in, and he's going to roll into it. Check it out. Okay, Austin. Yeah, look at that. Good job, Austin. Now let's move to the peg grind. Yeah, the peg grind is one of those tricks where it's a lot of fun. It's pretty easy as far as lift tricks are concerned, but it's one of those things where you got to learn the proper technique, and we're going to show you that. But before we get to that, one of the things that you're going to do wrong right off the bat, pretty much every kid does it, I know I did it, Dave probably did it as well, yep. is when you first start off with the peg grind, you're going to throw your body over the deck. You're really not used to doing lip tricks at that point, so you're not really understanding the concept. You want to stay kind of with your body weight over the transition rather than over the deck. You want to grind with pretty much your pegs only. They're the only thing that's going to be grinded on the coping. What Kip said is right. You really have to keep your weight over the transition because if you don't, you're going, to, you're going to just fall on the deck every single time. But the scariest thing about it, I guess, is that you really got to trust your four and a half inch peg. That's really the only thing that's going to save you from flying down on the deck or into the ramp. So you really got to learn to trust your pegs, lean in, keep your bike almost to one side of you where your weight's totally into the transition, but your bike's kind of on the, on the right side of you if you're turning to the left to keep you grinding far and fast. Okay, once you got the double peg dialed, Let's take a step further and go to the feeble grind. And remember, the feeble grind you learned on the grind box is where your back pegs on the coping and your front wheels on top of the ramp where you can steer and drop in. The harder part about the feeble grind is not necessarily the grinding part, Dave, but it's kind of rolling in because your front tire is actually up on the coping. And if you have a ramp like the one that we're on right here, the coping does stick up a little bit, so you got to be careful you don't hook your front tire on the way in, which will send you to the flat bottom. Definitely be careful. And also, the feeble is also going to slide a lot quicker, so make sure. You do a couple slow ones before you start going super fast because you will probably go off the ramp. I've done it many times, but let's show you. That's the feeble position where you're going to grind. And to get back in, you want to lean your weight in the same way. But instead of hopping the whole bike in, all you got to do, pick up your front wheel and lean right in. You don't have to hop the whole bike and use more energy than you really need. Let me show you.
You'll notice Dave's got quite a bit of speed, about the same amount of speed as for a double peg grind. He's going to set the front tire up. The hard part is the ride in is he hops back in almost bunny hopping like we showed you out in the flat ground. Getting the front tire up and over the top of the coping for a successful ride out. And also another thing to remember is when you're, when you're grinding in the feeble, sometimes you have a tendency of steering your wheel out over the deck and if you steer too much your back peg will slip off, you'll come down to your sprocket and you'll fall in. So be careful of that, keep your front wheel as close as you can to coping. When you come to the edge, hop in over the coping and ride away. Once you've mastered the grinds, you're probably going to be fearless. The rolling's going to seem like nothing to you. One thing you really want to look out for, roll up at a moderate speed, keep your pedals level, and make sure you pull your front wheel up over the coping, lean your weight in, and roll down. It's pretty simple. If you're doing feeble grinds, you probably are doing the rolling, but we're going to teach you anyway. Yeah, one of the things too, Dave, that you want to make sure you don't do is you don't want to go in straight at the ramp. When you roll in, you're going to go at an angle. Dave's going to show you how to do that right now. And definitely another thing, you don't want to pedal when you're going in. Keep your pedals level, that's a must. Here we go. Do your pedaling on the deck to get your speed. Dave's got a little bit of speed right there. He's going to lift up, go right in on the ramp. And then the pop out. I mean, one more thing you want to keep in mind with the rolling is don't roll over the coping. Pick up your front wheel, lift it over the coping, and then lean in and roll down. The next thing we're going to show you is what we call the rollback. Now this is a trick that you can practice on flat ground in a parking lot or in a driveway. I'm going to show it to you right here on the ramp and the principle is the same. What we're going to do is we're basically going to ride up the ramp and you might have heard before in bikes and skateboarding, things of that nature, you might have heard of the term called fakie. Well fakie basically means coming down the ramp backwards. Fakie tricks are very, very difficult and if someday you want to be pro there's a good chance you're probably going to be learning a lot of those fakie tricks. And we're going to teach you the basics on how to do a rollback. Now first I'm going to show you real quick, even though we don't have a lot of room here on the flat bottoms, I'm going to show you basically how to get the feel for the rollback. Now, believe it or not, this is one of those tricks, just like a lot of the tricks that we've taught you. It looks easy, but when it comes down to it, and you don't really have a whole lot of bike control, pretty much everything is difficult. We understand that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to talk to you and show you how I learned the rollback. And basically, like we said before, there's no substitute for practice. So I'm going to show you the proper technique, which is basically just like Dave taught us. When we're riding the ramp, our pedals are going to be level. Whichever way you like to ride, I prefer to ride with my right pedal back in that level position. And what I'm going to do before I even put my feet on the pedals is I'm going to keep both feet off so that it stabilizes my body over the center of the bike. I'm sitting down on the seat and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push myself backwards and just get the feel for the rollback. I'm just going to do that a couple times and try and get the feeling going here. Now one of the things that I notice when kids try this trick that stops them from kind of progressing on it is that they go too slow. Just like when you're riding forward, if you go real slow it's harder to steer. If you go with a little bit of speed it helps you kind of maintain your balance and your coordination. This time I'm going to take a pedal here and get a little bit of speed. I'm going to go up the transition, I'm going to keep my feet on the pedals, I'm going to roll backwards try and keep my body centered. Now it's a little tricky when you're coming up the ramp that way, going backwards because you're going up, rolling up the transition a little bit. Just stay focused. Concentrate on keeping your body over the center of the bike and keeping the wheels straight. Pretty soon you're going to be up there towards the top of the coping. You're going to be busting out tricks and landing backwards. That's a proper way to do a rollback. Kip and I took you through some basic steps of mini ramp riding. Just take your time, have fun. When you feel more comfortable, take it to the vert ramp and we'll be showing more of that in volume two. Yeah, I know you guys watch the X Games, all the flips, bar spins, all the big tricks. This is where it happens, the box jump. We're going to take you through it. We have special guest pro bike rider Ryan Nyquist with us to join us. Here he is. What's up, Ryan? What's up, Dave? Glad you could join us. Thanks. Well, you want to want to take us through how to jump a box? Yeah, let's get started. Uh, first things first, you want to watch your speed. Uh, right off the bat, just make sure you have enough speed just to be able to pop up. You don't want to fall back down. After that, just kind of approach it a little bit faster each time. You know, getting a little further on top of the deck, but uh, you definitely don't want to rush into this because if you if you just go full bore at it, like pedal as fast as you can, you're going to probably get hurt and crash. Definitely. I mean, when you come into the skate park, the most important part is safety gear. As you can see, Ryan and I are both padded up, knee pads, elbow pads, gloves, helmets for sure. And one thing that's optional that helps a lot is a flat-soled shoe that I have. If you have a flat-soled shoe with a grippy shoe pattern, sticks to your pedals, 
you're not going to slip pedals and fall off your bike. Let's go, Ryan. Why don't you jump it? Right, I'll see. show you. I'll, I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll go a little speed. Just Let's see it. Do a halfy. All right. This is called a halfy daffy. Go to Ryan. Relax on his bike. Pops up, lean forward, lands on top. Okay, Ryan, I'm going to give it a shot. Go a little bit faster, Dave. Okay. Check him out real relaxed. relaxed. Lean forward, push through. Whoa. A little bit further that time, you notice he went a little bit faster than I did that next time, so landed almost to the end, and I'm going to take it all the way this time. I'm going to go all the way. Right, Ryan, you going to go all the way this time? All the way. Watch this. Watch the speed and watch how relaxed he is. Great. Watch him lean forward. Back and push over the front of the bike, and there he is. He cleared it. But like Ryan was saying, start maybe halfway over, go three quarters, a little bit each time, a little more. Finally, you're clearing it. When you get very consistent and dialed at that, that's when you start beginning some bigger tricks. I'd just like you guys to meet my friend Cody. He's 12 years old, and this just goes to show you that anybody can do this if you work hard. Cody's been out here every day with us all the time. Obviously, Ryan and I probably make it look pretty easy, but Cody's out here working hard, and I guarantee when he's my age, he's going to own the sport. Oh, yeah. Cody, little ripper. Watch Cody. He's going he's gonna to blast this box. Show the box, Cody. Pretty amazing. Cody's a man. He is. Cody, you want to show us uh, your line? We jumped the box. Cody has a whole different line that works for him. He's a little, you know, a little smaller than us and doesn't quite have the leg power to get on the boost, so he kind of takes the, uh, the alternative route. Look at this guy. Yeah! <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome right there. In skate parks like this, there's alternatives. You don't have to do the line everybody else is doing. He's taking a different line and making it work for himself. Use your imagination, you know? Like, there's all kinds of stuff to do. You just got to look and find it. One of the beginner tricks that are great, and I think everybody should do it, is an X up. You go up, keep your pedals level. As you're going up, lean back, kind of pinch the seat, and turn the bars. When you pinch the seat with your knees, what it's going to do is going to enable the bike to stay stable right underneath you. It's not going to move around like that, and it'll be able to just twist the bars. This again, too, just take in stages. Maybe go up and do a couple turn bars first. Just work exactly. your way into the full X up. I, I, I'm going to go for it all the way. Pinch seat, twist. Nice. You go up, keep your pedals level. As you're going up, lean back, pinch the seat, and turn the bars. Well, that exit felt pretty easy. Ryan, why don't you show us the bar spin? Bar spin, all right. Well, uh, you're the master of bar spin. Uh, that's not, you know, you said it, not me. <laughs> I did, I said it, he's a master. <laughs> but uh, bar spin's kind of like similar to an X-Up really, except uh, you know, you go back, flat on the pedals, pinch in the seat. Um, it's kind of like an X-Up, except you're just kind of letting go and spinning it through really. Uh, a good way to practice these is just sit on the ground really, kind of back up against the fence or something, and just yep. get the motions down. And we went through that earlier on the flat ground, like we said, ride pedals level, pinch the seat, lean back, hand to hand. Yep. He's gonna do it on the jump for us. Well, yep. I almost died right there. <laughs> it's all dangerous. Yep. Hopefully I don't do that. Yeah, Ryan, bar spin. Pinch through him, look at that. Master of bar spins, Ryan Nyquist. Ride pedals level, pinch the seat, lean back, hand to hand. <laughs> Looks easy, doesn't it? Well, that's not really all that easy. It took me a long time to learn bar spins. Remember, have fun, don't get discouraged. What's next, no footer? Uh, yeah, I guess so, we can do no footers. The way I did them when I was younger, I would lock the brake just to keep my pedals stable so they wouldn't flip or spin. If your cranks are loose, it's easy for your cranks to spin around. I lock the brake and just slide your feet off. Don't try to pick them up and jump off the pedals. Just try to go up and be weightless. Start your jump. After you're off the lip, take your feet off the pedals and just slide them to the side, slide them back on, and ride away. There's another one where you can kind of take it in stages too. You don't got to kick them all the way out at first. You can kind of take them off a little bit and get comfortable in the air with your feet off the pedals. But make sure you're kind of looking and spotting for your pedals too because it'll hurt if you land no footed. <laughs> exactly. And this guy was a soccer player, so he has great feet hand eye coordination. That's right. Corner kicks and everything. Left stage will come up, kick his feet right off, spot the pedals and put them right back on, no problem. Yeah. Okay guys, the next trick, which is a little bit bigger, is a 360. 
Ryan and I are going to take you through it, but remember back to how you learned how to jump the box. A so little by little, finally clear it. That's what we're going to do on a 360. Yeah, just start slow, really. Just kind of make sure you can 360 up on top of the box, clearing, you know, just getting up on both wheels on the deck. And after that, just, you know, add a little more speed, a little more speed, a little more speed, but definitely take your time because you don't want to get hurt because this is a little more advanced trick for sure. Best thing on a 360, I think, is look back at the 360 bunny hop. Get those dialed on flat ground because when you come up the box jump, if you try to yank your front wheel, you're going to come around and land back wheel and fall on your back. You want to try to come off almost turning your front wheel off the lip and it's going to almost, you're almost going to ride off, almost nose wheelie off in a sense. In some ways it feels like that where you carve so hard you're taking off your front wheel and that levels you off, bring it around and come in smooth with your front end down. That's the most important part is your landing. One thing you don't want to do is ride off the lip and kind of start turning before you get to the top of it because that's what we call carving on a 360 and that's no good because what that does is whichever way you carve it'll shoot you <laughs> towards off the ramp and if you do it too totally. much you'll fall totally completely off the box. Missing a ramp's probably the worst way you could crash. You definitely don't want that or you don't want to come up and, and kick out this way or alley-oop the other way. You definitely want to stay centered and keep your bike level, but it takes a lot of practice to so start slow, and we're going to take you through it. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Go slow cool. first. Yeah. Slow one. Now watch Ryan as he's coming up. Watch how he takes off the lip, how he kind of whips, snaps off the lip. See, so that's a quick snap right there. We're first of his rotation. Yeah. Let's do it again. Just because we have very little speed, you got to whip a little bit harder to get all the way around. The day's gonna go a little bit faster. Snap, land, boom. Going a little bit further that time. Just a little bit faster. Now Ryan makes this look easy, but I guarantee it's not. Remember, it's gonna take a long time. Yeah, Ryan, we're close, what do you think? Uh, I say we let Dave do the arms and clear the box. What do you say, let's do it. Go for it. Keep it level and Woo! That was kind of squirrely. <laughs> A little bit squirrely. I'll do one better. <laughs> yeah, uh, going big. Well, see, this is where contests start with your friends. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a 360 and I'm going to add a bar spin to it. And this is where combinations go. I'm going to have to one-up Ryan. You truck driver? Woo! There you go. What do you call that, truck driver? That's called a truck driver, and that's a 360 with a bar spin. As you saw, we taught you the bar spin. Then the 360, that's when you take it to the next level. And I'm sure Ryan could probably throw you a 360 with a double bar spin, which is very advanced. We can't teach you that yet. Yeah, I'll just show you though. <laughs> go on and off for days like this but <laughs> yeah we could we could just you know we'll, we'll start tail whipping and flipping but you know we're not ready yet start with the basics have fun and there you go that's pretty much those are some of the box yeah, really. definitely and then as you saw you can combine so many tricks together so you're never limited if you if you like x ups and you like bar spins do a bar spin then an x up or an x up to a bar spin. exactly and then no foot out of that you can just go forever it's an artistic sport it's your own imagination don't limit yourself and wear your safety gear safety gear no limits well guys, that's Trick Tips Volume 1. Thanks for joining me, and I want to thank Ryan Nyquist, Colin Winkleman, and Kip Williamson for helping us through everything. Good luck, wear your safety gear, and stay tuned for Volume 2 and Volume 3. Talking to themselves, talking.